Well, good afternoon. So my name is Julien Serret. I work in uh, robotics at uh, Aldebaran Robotics in Paris. So y you probably think that that was fun, but what's the link with uh, healthcare actually? And well, let me tell you, these robots are not able only to, to dance. They can, of course, they can move, they can walk, but most importantly, they can interact with people. They can talk, they can listen to you, understand what you're telling them. So these are interaction robots. And most importantly, they are, look at these kids here, they are autistic, and they are doing a lot of progress thanks to the interaction with these robots. Let me tell you why. So autism. Autism requires a lot of um, um, a heavy therapy. It requires a lot of uh, treatments. It requires a, um, a lot of interactions. So the process is therapists usually do exercises with kids, and uh, they train them into social interactions with humans. But here the problem is, uh, is humans themselves, because because humans, well, these kids have, have difficulties to, uh, to process too many information at the same time. When you talk to them, they see your lips, they, see your, they hear your voice, they see your eyes, they see too many things, and it's confusing for them. So it bugs them. And here, with a robot, using them in the therapy, well, they are very simplified. They are simplified humans. So kids enter interaction, in, into interaction much more easily. Then. These kids need predictability. They, they need very, very simple relations between cause and effect. And robots are predictable. We can program them so that they are predictable. And then, well, as any learning process, you need repetition. You need to repeat over and over these exercises so that it's, it's successful. And robots are very, very, um, very good at repetition, of course. So we've seen that. Robots can help kids. But what about adults? What about us? And I'm pretty sure everybody here is aware of these statistics. Um, everybody here will be over 65 in 2050, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and you might know that by that date, we will have only two people, two active people to support us. That means that basically when you go back home, you can tell your kids, well, just be prepared to support me full time in the next years. So what, what kind of project is that for our society? Well, we think here robots can help. So, so what kind of robots? Uh, as we see here, the, the problem, I mean, it's already a challenge. Taking care of dependent people, that's already a challenge. So we need, we need robots now. We need robots that are accepted now. And we need robots that are affordable, of course, because we don't want people to uh, we don't want to force people into robotics. We want people to love robots, and this is why we truly believe in a in a small humanoid such as now that you've just seen. Our now robot is is very accepted by older people. When you first talk about it, when you first talk about robotics with old people, they will say, "Are you kidding me? Well, I'm not a machine. I'm not going to be assisted by another machine." That's that doesn't make sense. But once they have met now, they begin to love him. They really like it. And then they begin to ask questions. What, what can it do for me? Can I interact with him? They're very curious at it. And, and of course, it's very important that it's also adapted to our own world. We don't want robots to, uh, we don't want to adapt to the world of robots. We want robots to adapt to our world. So that's why we, we show these robots climbing the, the ladder here. So what, what can a robot do now? What can now do now for all the people? Well, it can connect to any, any connected device that you have at home. It can probably, it can read your emails and speak them loudly for you. It can write your emails for, for you. It can be connected to any, any smart home equipment. You can tell him to open the curtains, switch on the TV, turn on the light. So in a way, it's kind of doing the same as you could do maybe with a tablet. But but what kind of interface is a tablet? An interf a tablet is not proactive. It doesn't come to you to engage into co conversation. It's not so much interactive. So we truly believe that with an hour at home, you can have this kind of interactivity. Uh, you don't have just an interface. You have something that is proactive. You have a presence at home. And most importantly, as we, as we see here, well, it's very attractive for the grandsons as well. 
And what is the next step? So this is something we are just preparing for, for this year, actually. That's the bigger version. But still, it's the size of, um, of a kid. Because we, we, don't want to be, we don't want people to be afraid of robots. And still, it's going to be a small size. But, but already capable of doing more things, like lifting things, doing more services. So wh where do I want to go there? We, we need robots. We see that. There's, there's probably no, no doubt about it. Um, but we shouldn't be afraid of robots. For those who wonder, there's no, there's no risk at all that any day uh, in, the, in the coming years, uh, doctors will be replaced by robots. Thank you. <laughs>